Hello YouTube world and welcome back. Today we're going to see if we're able to start this this truck behind me, this Gas 53B. It's just been sitting here since 2019. So the story with this thing is really simple. I bought it back in 2016. Uh, it did run. It didn't come with the box. I bought that box uh, separately for a lot of money, which was kind of a murder for the wallet back then. But, you know, a lot of people have asked me to do something with it. And the reason why it's been neglected like this, you know, it, it wasn't like that when I got it, is because we have some engine issues. Oh, this engine is a ZMZ53. Uh, and you can tell, because the way it is, it's pretty much a Ford Y-block clo clone, basically. And there's your oil refiner, doesn't the newer ones have the oil filter. But here's the thing, this engine isn't seized. It did run, but the real problem with what I had with this engine was the oil and coolant would mix. For some reason, there's a coolant leak somewhere. So either we have bad china walls. I did change that, but it didn't make any difference. Or we have a blown it hit gasket somewhere. So I already cleaned certain parts here. So pretty much what we have to do is take the old bath air cleaner off, take the intake manifold, the Jenny out of the way and take the heads off and see what's behind door number one and door number two. And because it's a Ford clone, uh, yeah, they have these strange, I don't know, these are pipe fittings or what the heck they are. They have these strange fittings and elbows and you know what? This for a distant Ford cousin, this thing freaking is awesome when it runs, but when you know people also like me have neglected this for years, it's pretty poopy to get it back running. But enough yapping. Let's start pulling the heads again and finding out why we had so much coolant in the oil pan. Now I'm going to stick something inside the oil pan and see how much damage did we accumulate over the years. The engine isn't C stuff, but you know what? I mean, just for, you know, I don't know, educational reasons, we just have to start working on this thing and uh, find out why it doesn't run. Now, first order of business before we start doing anything else, we have to remove and cut this crappy exhaust because it's 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 bad, it's it's rusted through. The smuffler and the exhaust pipes have to go. So I brought this saw and yeah, we should be I'm gonna remove it and then you'll see why this thing is just so bad. Well here you can see this exhaust is Pretty pooched. I mean, this was bad when I got the truck, but you know, the reason why I removed the exhaust pipes was, I mean, this flange wasn't sealing, and this is a homemade flange, and you know, there was there were no exhaust manifold gaskets in present, so yeah, it was leaking into the cabin. So yeah, this exhaust seen better days. We have we have a way better one, so this one can go to scrap pile now. Don't care more for it. So hello, I'm back here and uh, I've taken the intake manifold off and uh, well, nothing really interesting to report. Let me just show you what I found. You can see the intake manifold gaskets, which are actually uh, rubber gaskets on this particular engine, all, all of this, even the ZMZ-13, which the Russian limos used to have the same setup. I mean, it's a dumb idea because, <laughs> I mean, rubber intake manifold gaskets are like, you know, asking for to fail but you know these ones have hold i i don't see any of them ever leaking so the manifold gasket held but something else didn't didn't find any odd shaped things here's the manifold from beneath now this is a good used manifold uh it's straight it doesn't usually when people use water these are your you know ports for the coolant these ones corrode or just 
warp out. And this one, I don't know, this, this one's okay, we're going to reuse it. The only thing I'm not going to reuse is this hose and there's a seal here on the oil refiner that leaks, so we're gonna have to take care of those. But as for the engine, I'm gonna tear down more and find out what the heck is going on, because uh, now we gotta remove the heads. Okay, I got the head out, so it actually look, doesn't look too bad. I was kind of uh, worried that the block would be corroded, but there's there's some sludge behind cylinder number 48. But we can get it out by, you know, hot water and opening one of the one of the peacocks down below and or the valves. And we can just scrape out that sludge. That's, that's not a big deal. The block's fine. But when you look at the head, well... You can see from this head gasket that this thing was shot a long time ago. And like this is the issue we had all the time. The, you know, the coolant would just leak past, and the more I look at the head now, number four has been burning oil, or number eight. The other ones look fine, don't see any cracks, but there's some pitting here and here. I don't know. I mean, I'm actually kind of. Uh, leaning towards using a different headset and also because the exhaust manifolds are rotted and somebody put freaking sc not screws but the steel nuts so basically we have to torch them out even to exchange the manifold gasket so I don't know I'll see what the other sides I mean so far nothing catastrophic but just just overall just bad parts and also the washers I'm going to show look like hold on oh my god no not this one where's the washer for God's sakes well this is the problem you want to show an example and all you have is just freaking clutter everywhere there now this is the original washer but all of these are bent smashed uh, they're just unusable I have to scavenge all the hard I'm like, going to put this engine together uh, we have to use different hardware I mean I have to scavenge from another engine which I have plenty of uh, all the hardware and all new washers because these ones that came out they're just not only mismatched but they're just the toast the curved can't use them anymore so yeah I guess uh, let's turn into bank two and see what the uh, what we can find out from there. Well, I'm back. Well, I pulled the other head off and well, as you can see from the head gasket, this thing was completely shot. Like, if you look at the witness marks, you can see that the coolant's been seeping out all the time. And well, also that we have rusty exhaust valves. So I don't know, like this head looks better than the other side, but I'm still leaning towards using a different set of, uh, of heads completely with new gaskets and also doing the, the valves on this one, but probably good. But I don't know, like the more I look at it, the less I want to see. And we have this cylinder here, right there, number three. That one's a bit rusty in, inside, but nothing too serious. Like this isn't, this one will clear out. I can, uh, let me put my finger in there. Yeah, you can see that, but I mean this one will hone out Like that's that's not even bad at all and the other ones um, They're fine This one has a ring broke at some point, but no ridges and Again the blocks full of sludge We're gonna clean the block and well now we know that I don't know we may actually use different heads like like this engine isn't the worst not the best as well but well it's it's savable at least now I know it's gonna run when we put a different set of heads and new gaskets and it it, it should go it should go I'm going to have to do some prep work here and there but we should be fine so yeah I'm like I said the, the engine that you know Scott and Jonathan V had were way worse than this. I mean, this is like the easy job. The only thing I have to do is I have to retread all these studs. Like they're they're hardened steel, but a few of them here are nicked. This one's rusty. This one's completely rusty. 
So I have to use a, a fine thread M11 to get these into the shape so we can put our new hardware on. Well, I guess uh, I have to start cleaning with this thing and we'll find out what else we find. Okay, we're making progress here. Uh, I did somewhat cleaning of the block now and what I did, I took some, uh, because at the back of the cylinder number eight or number four, uh, usually there's a lot of, you know, this sludge and grot in the block. So what I do first is I use hot water, which is uh, 60 to 55 degrees Celsius. And I just use this application here Pretty much what I do, I just pour the water from, from the ports in and and just to get the sludge out I use this fancy tool which is just basically your number nine wire and this is all, only to get the coarse material out. Now to get the rest out uh, I may actually do a radiator flush with this engine then we can, there's, there's not much of this crowd here but just a little bit and those last fine things you can't get out without you know doing a radiator flush or the and to do the engine flush I may actually just use uh, distillate water or just rain water and put the chemicals in to dissolve all this other crap which remains and we should be having a clean block and radiator I mean it's a straightforward process I mean if you're wondering what what the red stuff is this is just my favorite brand of automatic transmission fluid that I use to dip the cylinders in. Now there's, I may actually have to hone here so I'm going to modify and put something on the studs so that these wet sleeves won't come out when I turn the engine. And uh, yeah, because it has a hand crank it's just so useful we don't have to mess with the starter at all. And don't worry if you get some water into the sleeves or cylinders. Uh, you can wipe it out later and just put oil in it. You just don't leave the water in. Just, just put some oil. Not, 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 nothing's going to happen really. And because it's now soaked in ATF anyway, we're going to have none of that, those issues. And yeah, I'm going to see. I also need to clean up these surfaces here. And oh yeah, it's, it's going to be a freaking cleanup trip. And fun fact, when I opened this engine the first time, at this point here, there was a broken 200... 20 volt light bulb. I don't know how the heck you managed to freaking put a light bulb in it and break it. Um, yeah, someone who worked with this engine before me was a real mechanic. I mean, well, they were just freaking drunk on beer or stoned. Who, who knows? I mean, we're going to just redo everything, whoever did the previous things wrong, and going to see what's what's going to happen. I mean. I'm convinced it's going to run, but first of all, we need to do some serious work. So now I've, I've looked into my parts stash and found good usable heads, which we don't have to do much work in. And granted, I will take the valves off and see what's up with this valve. This one's a bit lower than the other ones, but we're going to see if there's any rust or anything and change also the valve stem seals. Now, these are the newer type. Uh, heads for the gas 53 engine but if you look at closely there's some mounting brackets here now if you look at the part number it's actually is meant for gas 66 but what you want to uh, pay attention to is this last digit 10 and if you have the other side matching 10 even if this the first number is different then you can use both of these heads at the same time because they're these are not the lowest compression and they're between the mill because the number 15 actually is for the uh, higher grades fuel for 98 octane and 95 octane fuel but this is good I mean for what we are going to do is it's going to be plenty enough we don't have to actually overthink this I mean yeah I'm going to also these are like relatively clean there's not much clean so I do have to get some starts from the other heads but What's important is this side. Now this engine run, when I took it apart, this was a scrapyard engine and this one doesn't have any major cavities. There's a few ones, to, like this one here, but we can use epoxy to pretty much take care of that. And yeah, I would say we are pretty...
pretty good with this one. I mean, the surface looks nice, so it'll clean up and we have usable heads and we don't have to worry about anything else here. So yeah, I'm going to also I look for other parts as well that I need. I need to get steel washers for these, for the studs and for the nuts. And because the old ones I took off, they're just unusable anyway. So yeah, I'm going to see what I can scavenge from the other heads and I'll maybe disassemble this for you in, I don't know, a few seconds, but for me it will be probably in a few days. Anyway, let's get back to work and let's dig deeper into this stuff. All right, as you can see, it's the, it's already late November and we've, we've got snow. I've, I've been not doing much with the truck lately because, you know, the Belarus tractor is the priority number one. But here's some interesting findings now. Oh my God, these things just wanna freaking go wherever they decide to go. But anyway, this is the old oil pump we took out now. You need a eight hex key or Allen key. And when I turn this one, it has almost no resistance. Like if you put oil in it, it will hardly do anything. Now this is a spare one. And when I put the Allen key in it and turn, I hope it doesn't oil in it now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now look this. Yeah, this, this pump is actually from a same type of truck, same engine and it had almost no oil pressure problems whatsoever. So I know this is a good one. And this one, I think the clearances are this bad that this thing just doesn't. This is why you've seen the older videos, the needle flopping or just showing almost low oil pressure all the time because the pump's worn out. No freaking wonder. And for those who wonder what these markings here are, I don't know what the zero means, but but this interesting one, which is like a circle with the R and T in it, is actually means that this pump was rebuilt in the in Tartu, and it was a rebuilding company back in the 80s and 70s. So this one's probably been rebuilt on May 85, and this the other pump I have is rebuilt on January 86. So they're not that far apart, but this one is a shorter pump. This one is the older pump with the nose cone, but they do fit. The flanges fit, everything else fits. So the only difference is in this, uh, is this check valve for the, is this the oil pressure check valve is here. This one is in a different space, but otherwise they will fit. There's, there's no problem there. So I think uh, we actually found one of the causes why the oil pressure on this truck was low all the time. But speaking of problems, I pulled one of the piston nuts from that very furry cylinder and uh, yeah, these aren't my witness marks. Somebody in the past has hammered this piston a lot and yeah, the ring's a bit rusty but salvageable. The, I actually got to find out that this still has the, origin, not the original, but the, the, how I would say, 0, 0.0 tolerance bearings, rod bearings. And that means that the shaft, the crankshaft hasn't been grinded. So still has the factory settings in it. And here's the cylinder. I cleaned it out and not too bad. I mean, it does need a bit cleaning more. Here's the other one, which needs a bit of attention. There's, there's no gouges or gavings. Only this cylinder here has a broken ring. And now I'm going to explain what the issue it is and where I stand from. Okay, as you can see, this is a kind of a problem for me. Not, not a huge one, but here's where I stand with this. Now, 
granted we have I found out we have 93.5 millimeter pistons in it, which is the maximum oversize you can get for this ZMZ 53 engine this is the older variant engine and the newer ones are in the same tolerance range the problem is finding uh, these larger you know, I mean when I say large I say the rings for the older type engine are different they're actually much thicker than the newer ones so somewhere in the late 80s they changed the ring design and and in the 90s they changed the ring design in the Gorky, you know, car factory, and now we're kind of standing where we need probably a new set of 93.5 millimeter rings. I can't order them from Russia because they're actually considered strategical goods and they don't sell you these rings, so kind of a bad deal. Can't get anything from Russia for this truck. The and when some people like the Estonian will say, oh, well, go to that place which is called Rebella. They don't have it as well. There's a shortage of these rings. Pistons, on the other hand, I could get. I mean, that's a B group piston, which means that it's an oversized piston for a certain, uh, certain weight category. So piston wouldn't be a problem. I may have a new piston to replace that. You know, gouge one, which somebody has hammered in the past. Who knows who did that? I didn't. Because those are like really, really old witness marks. And then we're kind of like, what do we do? I could try to find the rings. The other thing is maybe we'll just swap in another engine, which has 92.5 millimeter pistons, which I have parts plenty of. And there's plenty of them in the store. I don't know what to do with this. I mean, it's an engine rebuild the last. Well... One thing I can say, the old heads turned out to be a uh, total bust. I took only the studs out and the rest is just scrap. Uh, they would be repairable, but, you know, the pitting and all the other problems we found uh, with my friend, we decided it's better just to use the other heads I have. And that's going to be my winter project, fixing the heads and fixing the rockers. So when we have... The other part of the engine done we can just throw everything together and it should run i mean even with that piston it will run it it ran with it before so why wouldn't it it's just how you know deep you want to dig with this thing i mean in the end of the day maybe finding the rings is probably the priority i mean if you want to help me to find the rings go ahead if somebody has rings for that are 93.5 millimeter for a gas 53 engine let me know uh, i'll provide the measurements and part numbers and everything in the description so this is where we're kind of going to set this video off i hope to get more done but i may or may not pull i mean because it's so cold outside i don't want to freaking hurt my back by pretty much being on the ground for hours so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna decide if i do pull more of the pistons out we may have to do that anyway to change the rod bearings or we're going to just conserve the engine for the spring of 2024 and go from there next year because this isn't really a high priority list machine but i just want to get it running because i hate static things I'm kind of sick of looking at it and it's it's kind of like fix it or or whine about it all the time. This this is where I stand with this thing. So other parts wise I'm good. I think the rings are probably right now the worst problem I have. But I'll see if I can find anything and if if nothing else we're just going to throw everything back to get what we have and it's it's just it'll go run. It's gonna run. I'm more than sure of it. Oh yeah, by the way, I also got the new hardware, the washers and and new 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 nuts to this engine. And also, I I think we're going to also do a little bit more than I wanted to. But unfortunately, this has turned out to be a total engine rebuild, nonetheless. So I guess I'm going to say this is going to this is going to be it for this video. But we're going to probably continue this. 
next spring of 2024. So see you around then. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and like. See you all later.